Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Learning FreeCAD for Beginners series. In this tutorial, we're gonna be looking at reference constraints, what they are and what they can be used for. So I hope you enjoy these videos and let's have a look at this type of constraint. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. So what is reference geometry? I'm in FreeCAD 0.21, but the same concept exists in previous versions as well. I've come into the sketcher and I'm going to build a sketch in here. And this is going to be a simple sketch. So I'm going to create a new document on the XY plane and hit OK. And I'm going to create a simple box in here. Hit escape to get the mouse pointer back or right mouse button. And we'll set these to be equal with the equality constraint. And we're going to use some symmetry with this point and this point against this point here using the symmetry constraint. I'm now going to set a length in here using the length. And we'll set this to 100 millimeters. You notice that the length itself has turned our sketch to green, so it's fully constrained. We can see over the left-hand side, it's saying fully constrained. And this is known as a datum or datum constraint. We can name this constraint if we want. Let's just hit OK. So we've got the 100 millimeters in here. If we look to our left and come down, we can see our constraint is in here. If I double click the constraint and change this to reference, you see that we have an under constrained sketch of one degree of freedom. This means that changing that constraint to reference hasn't fully constrained the sketch and it can move. Watch the reference constraint. So if I shrink this box, our reference constraint changes and reflects the size of our new box size. Why is this useful? Well, let's think of a sketch that becomes over constrained. For that, we need some kind of application. So let's set this back to 100 millimeters. I'm going to place some geometry in here. Let's say we add a box here. And let's say we build in some kind of containing box. Now we're going to put some items in here for a client. The client has given us some instructions. They want any internal features to be at least 10 millimeters away from the sides of the box. Let's do this one as well. Say 10 millimeters for this one. And we'll set a length in here of about 75 millimeters. And this one, a length of 25 millimeters. So we've got the box. The client also wants a circle that's in here. And the circle has a diameter of 50 millimeters. Now the length here they want, so I'm going to take this circle and this edge and use a distance in here. Now this is only in 0.21. I'm going to say the distance is 12 millimeters. If you was doing this in earlier versions of 0.21 or 0.20, then let's delete that. You're going to have to add a point constraint onto this circle, the point on object constraint there. Hit escape to get the mouse pointer back and use this point and this point and keep them in line like so. Then we can create a constraint between this point and this point, set some distance away of 12 millimeters. But we have an issue in that the distance from here to here is smaller. So let's add that in. I'm just going to use the point constraint on here. So point, you can see we've got the auto constraints, the point on object constraint, 
has kicked in and we see that because we've got the auto constraint on also i've got the auto remove redundant constraints so this is important because this will kick in in a moment and we'll add the point to there hit escape to get the mouse pointer back or right mouse button select the point and this center point of the circle and place those in line with horizontal constraint now it's fully constrained but i can take these two points and add that reference constraint in with the horizontal you see it's become redundant constraint so if i okay that now what will happen is the remove redundant constraints will kick in but i don't want that to so i'm going to take this point and this point and set some length and set this to reference if i hit okay now i get a reference of how far away this is and i can go back to the client and say well if you wanted this circle as a 50 millimeter constraint a 50 millimeter diameter then something has to change somewhere in this project to allow this to be that length for instance i could make this 12 millimeter length here into a reference and hit ok we've now got this constraint not restricting anything just acting as a reference and i can go back to my other reference constraint here and set that to 10 millimeters allowing me to say to the client well we've got a five millimeter gap in here is that enough or do we have to come in and change the length of this side going into the 100 millimeters set that to reference hit ok well we need the 10 millimeter gap at least here or say 12 millimeters then as you can see everything's changed seven millimeters have added to this length here and we're all good go back to client just increase it by seven millimeters is that okay you notice on the left hand side that the constraint has turned to blue to show its reference constraint here and we can filter these if we wanted to we can come in and look for the different constraints in here so we got datum constraints we got name constraints, we got reference constraints, we got the selected constraint in there. So some other examples of where to use reference constraints. Let's say we had a gain, a square or a rectangle in here, and we wanted to center a hole, let's say about here. But the hole has to be a certain diameter and has to change position when this is resized so it has to keep a constant space between these edges so i'm going to hit the right mouse button to get the mouse pointer back and i'm going to add some construction geometry so i'm going to take a circle make it coincident to the center of that circle come out and i'm going to touch this side with a tangent constraint get the mouse pointer back with the right mouse button or escape and then take this circle and this side and make them tangent and we can take this circle and change it to construction mode so this doesn't affect the geometry when it's padded and you won't see it when we close so what's happened now is that we've got this circle in here let's put some diameter across here and make this five millimeters so if we change the size of this rectangle then we get a constant length away from these sides as you can see and then we can set up some reference geometry between this point and this point and we could use either a distance like so click reference and okay and then we can see that move in and out there so we can actually read off this distance or let's click on that and hit delete we can set some lengths in here so a length here so that's reference and we'll add a length in here as well so we can see how constant they are and set that to reference 
So as this moves, we can see that our construction geometry is working for us. And that hole sits a constant length away from the edges. Another place that you would use this if, say, you was using a formula. Let's delete that. It's highlighted all and deleted that. And we'll add, let's say, a line. It's a line here and a line going this way. The length of this line, let's place a length in here of 50 millimeters. Now, the length of this line, I want it to be a fraction of this side. So that's coming here and set the name and we'll call this left side. Now, if I come to here and place a length in here, I want this as a formula. So I'm going to use the formula button and I'm going to type in constraints. There's a dot there and you see the left side come up. So that's the left side here. And then we're going to times it, let's say by 0 0.75 and hit OK. So we've got that formula in there and hit OK again. So we get this constraint in here and you can see it's saying 37.5. If I then add a length, say in here, like so, here, escape to get the mouse pointer back. So that's connected there. I can take that length, set a distance, and you can see we've got redundant constraint and set that to a reference and hit OK. So we've got a reference for this length now. So if we change this 50 millimeters to say 43, then you can see our formula kicks in and plus we get the reference for this side. So we know how long this side is going to be. So I hope that's giving you an idea of how to use the reference constraints and what they are. I hope you find that useful and I hope to see you in the next video. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B E Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos. And I hope to see you again in the next one.